All right, the Kentucky Derby is back where it belongs. The first Saturday in May, and back with us to drop some knowledge is horse racing analyst for NBC Sports, Lafitte Pinkai. What's good, man? How are you? All good, Emerson. What's going on? Thanks for having me. Yeah, it's great to have you here. Uh, let's start with essential quality here. Trained by Brad Cox, the favorite entering Saturday, drew the number 14 post. So why is he deserving to be a favorite in your mind? He's in undefeated reigning champion, uh, the two-year-old champion from last season. Um, he's never going to like wow you with his brilliance. You're not going to watch him race and left searching for superlatives like you would a, an American pharaoh a justify. What he does do is just figure out a way each and every time. His, his versatility. Um, he's won close to the lead. He's won from off the pace. He's won at Churchill Downs. He's, he's been in traffic and trouble and overcome that. The only question we had about essential quality going into his last start was, what would happen when a, a horse race turns into a dog fight? When a horse's heart is tested? That happened in the bluegrass with Highly Motivated, and, and he showed that he wasn't afraid, uh, afraid to, to counterpunch. He dug in. He called on that class. He called on that heart. What defined him as a champion? That's what separates him thus far to this point and why essential quality is a deserving favorite. All right. Well, how about trainer Todd Pletcher here? He's, he's going to have four horses in the Derby, but perhaps his best known agenda drew the number one post like on the rail. So how much of a concern is that for this horse? It's Todd Pletcher has started 55 horses in the Derby, the most ever. I think he's had at least four, four times. He had five horses in another Derby. No question, no known agenda is the best of his quartet. He's a, a grade one Florida Derby winner. He's improving at just the right time. They put blinkers on his last couple of starts to get him just more focused, and it's really yeah. worked. Um, the rail is a concern. No horse has won from the rail since 1986, and it took the greatest yeah. jockey who ever lived to pull it off in Bill Shoemaker. Um, no horse has won from the one, two, or three since 1998 in Real Quiet. The difference is the... the, the space that the starting gate occupies is less they used to have 14 horses in one gate and 15 towards the outside in an auxiliary gate and that took up more space so the jockey on the one was literally if he were to look straight if the horse ran straight they would have gone right into the fence really claustrophobic and uncomfortable now you just have one gate takes up less space so the one post really isn't that bad for known agenda and he has arguably the best jockey in north america in the saddle and irad ortiz well, Lafitte, which horses concern you after the results of the draw from Tuesday? Emerson, it's a fair race. Aside from known agenda being hampered by the rail, I think it's a fair race. The only horse I was concerned about is Rock Your World because he's only run once on dirt. Um, so we don't know how he would respond to other horses being in front of him and kicking dirt back in his face. He's mm -hmm. run way to the outside. The combination of his post and his tactical speed where he'll be close early He's not going to have to worry about any of that kickback. He was the only one I had concerns about in terms of a contender going in. He drew just fine. All right. Well, out of all the horses getting like tons of buzz here, one of them is Hot Rod Charlie because of some of his recent performances. Trained by Doug O'Neill. We talked, you know, talked to him the other day. Great dude. Do, do you think he has what it takes? This horse has what it takes to pull out a victory here? I do. And for some of the same reasons as essential quality, it's, it's Hot Rod Charlie's versatility. We saw him go wire to wire in the Louisiana Derby. He was second to essential quality in the Breeders' Cup Juvenile. But this is a horse you can root for and just get behind if you know nothing about horse racing. Yeah. He's a horse that, like, he is co-owned by, by five college buddies. That, that it's amazing, around. dude. Football teammates and frat buddies. Yes. It's so cool. We're going to have a chance to see them on the walkover with, like, these Kentucky Blue Bloods that have been trying to win the Derby and winning the Derby for, like, decades. And here's these five like frat boys, <laughs> co-owners of the Derby Horse. They call him Chuck. It's so, it's just an amazing story. We can't wait to tell it. <laughs> just see them shotgunning beers like on the track. But yeah, egg stand right before post out. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, that's weird flex, but okay, you know. But also I, I love like the mission behind that, that horse too. I know they're raising money for like a fantastic cause. And we talked to Mr. O'Neill about that the other day. Um, from one great trainer to another one. How about legendary trainer Bob Baffert here, man? Only one horse racing this year. That's Medina Spirit. Baffert chasing history, currently tied for the most Kentucky Derby wins with six. Can Medina Spirit, Lafitte, help him make history? Um, he's, I, I don't know. He's not Silver Charm. I don't think he's American Pharaoh. I know he's not American Pharaoh. He's not Justify. 
Baffert's superstar is sidelined. His name is Life is Good on paper. He was easily the fastest, most talented three-year-old of this generation. Sideline will miss the Triple Crown. Going to be just fine. He'll be back at some point. I guess sometimes when you're just reading the tea leaves and trying to read trainers, and Baffert's a pretty easy read. You can kind of tell when he feels like he has King Kong locked up in a cage, ready to unleash. I'm not getting that sense from Bob with Medina Spirit. I think Hall of Fame jockey John Velasquez rides him aggressively. He might be in front passing the stands for the first time, maybe, maybe, because he's one of these horses that are better at keeping other horses from passing him than he is actually passing horses. So maybe he makes his presence felt more early than late. Uh, late. Just not getting that overwhelming, beaming confidence from Bob Baffert like you do sometimes leading up to yeah. a Kentucky Derby. Maybe he's just playing mind games with That's us. possible too. That's possible too. <laughs> I mean, listen, nobody about- liked authentic last year. No, no. I, I, did, I didn't think he could run a mile. I didn't think he'd get the distance and, you know, sleep on, on Baffert and look what happens. You got uh, any favorite long shot picks? you have any for us? Uh, I think to use in the exotics underneath, Midnight Bourbon has just trained too well, looked too good for trainer Steve Asmussen. Asmussen, I think he believes Superstock is going to run the race of his career. I don't know if that's good enough to win, but that's the sense I get from Asmussen regarding the Arkansas Derby winner. Uh, Obesos from well off the pace. Um, closers always have to worry about navigating traffic and that kind of thing. He's going to be about 25, 30 to one. And if you watch his race in the Louisiana Derby, the way he closed up the fence with, with a, a rookie Kentucky Derby jockey, Marcelino Pedrosa, I wouldn't leave him off your tickets either. Those are the, the three I'm, I'm gravitating towards in terms of potential upsets. Hook us up with your pick to win. I need to hear it. I'm still, man, I'm like still, I, I'm, I'm vacillating between Rock Your World, the Santa Anita Derby winner, and, and, and highly motivated. It probably would be essential quality, but this guy, Mattress Mac, Jim McInvale, owner of Gallery Furniture out of Houston, is going to bet like $4 million on this horse yeah. like over two days. That, like, that's why he's a two-to-one morning line favorite. Otherwise, he'd be like three-to-one, seven-to-two. The morning line odds maker, his job is to make the morning line based on where the money's going to go, not who he thinks is going to win. So I like essential quality, but because of Mattress Mac, the price can going to be too yeah. damn short. So I have to make a decision at some point. I'll tell you, it will be either Rock Your World or Highly Motivated. Mattress Mac, good friend of DraftKings. He's put down some ridiculous Super Bowl bets in the past, too. And You're I'm just kidding. sitting here. I'm like, he puts oh. his money where his mouth is and then some. <laughs> yeah, for sure. Uh, before you get out of here, let's finish up by diving into our free-to-play pool for the race. You can find this one on the DraftKings Sportsbook in the pool section. It's a $100,000 prize pool with 5 k going to first place. And like I said, it's free to play. Even if sports betting is not allowed in your state. So rapid fire style here, Lafitte, quick and dirty. You ready? Yep, fire. All right. Will the winning time be over or under two minutes and two and a half seconds? Faster. All right. Will the saddle cloth number of the winning horse be odd or even? Oh, I can't. It, it, whatever rock your world or highly motivated is. <laughs> uh, let's, uh, let's go even. Okay. Which horse will have the better finishing position, Known Agenda or Hot Rod Charlie? Known Agenda. How about better finish between Highly Motivated or Medina Spirit? Highly Motivated. And finally, give us your best guess on who finishes one, two, and three. Rock Your World, Highly Motivated, Super Stock. Lafitte Pinkai, awesome catching up with you, dude. Thanks for making time for DraftKings. Anytime. Best of luck with your wagers, man.